Welcome to St. Peter's Episcopal Church, the little church with the big heart. We're so glad you're here this morning. Thank you to everybody who came to my installation yesterday. It was lovely. We had a nice time. Good, good uh, chili cook-off. I did not win, unfortunately. <laughs> Kari, Kari won. So congratulations. <laughs> I got second. I was so close. <laughs> I was so close to telling you got second. <laughs> but that's how you know it wasn't great, so it's okay. Oh, I was going to say something else that's going out of my head. I'll get it old. I know. Uh, we do have coffee hour today, so please, after the service, stay and join us for coffee hour. Uh, if it's your first time here at St. Peter's, if you take communion in your home church, if you are a baptized Christian, you are welcome to take communion here with us as well. When it's time for communion, we come up and we line up the rail here. If you just want bread, communion in one kind, you just hold out one hand. If you would like bread and wine, communion in two kinds, you hold out two hands, and I will dip the wafer and place it in your hand. If you need gluten-free wafers, just Put your hands down like that, and I'll know it gets you blue free. If you would just like a blessing, just cross your arms over your chest like so. At this time, please make sure your cell phone is off or on vibrate. And take a moment to quiet your heart and your mind as we prepare for worship. Thank you. of your Holy Spirit, 
that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the word. Readings from Daniel, chapter 7, verses 1 through 3, and 15 through 18. In the first year of King Belshazzar of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head as he lay in bed. Then he wrote down the dream. I, Daniel, saw in my vision by night the four wind, winds of heaven stirring up the great sea, and four great beasts came out of the sea, different from one another. As for me, Daniel, my spirit was troubled within me, and the visions of my head terrified me. I approached one of the attendants to ask him the truth concerning all this. So he said that he would disclose to me the interpretation of the matter. As for these four great beasts, four kings shall arise out of the earth. But the holy ones of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, forever. And ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 149, we will read responsibly. You get the bold part. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise in the congregation of the faithful. Let, Let Israel rejoice in his Savior. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people and adorns the poor with victory. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them be joyful on their beds. Let, Let the praises of God be in their throat and a two edged sword in their hand. To wreak vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples. To bind their kings to chains and their to inflict on them the judgment decree. This is the glory for all his faithful people. Hallelujah. <laughs> the second reading is from Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 11 through 23. <coughs> In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you, as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, 
and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The Gospel. Of Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ.
meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord our God. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Today we celebrate the Feast of All Saints. And you'll forgive me if I do a bit of teaching, but my experience has been that a lot of folks in the Episcopal Church haven't had a lot of exposure to the saints. I'm not saying that necessarily applies to any of you. You may have a deep, in-depth understanding of the topic. And if you do, I assume that's because you really like the saints. So you won't mind me doing this. First, what is a saint? In its most basic sense, a saint is a holy one. Someone who is set apart for God's purposes. As a result, every follower of Jesus Christ is a saint. Congratulations! <laughs> you are all saints! <clears throat> In most of his letters, the Apostle Paul refers to the recipients as saints. To understand what it means that every follower of Christ is a saint, I think it's helpful to look at it from two different but complementary perspectives. The first is our position before God. In 1 Corinthians, Paul writes that Christ Jesus became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Sanctification has the same root word as saint. So all who are sanctified by Christ are saints because they are made holy before God by the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. And the second angle we want to look at it from is our experience. Because of our status as holy ones, our life should reflect that reality. St. Peter challenges all believers to not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you must also be holy in all of your conduct. Peter grounds this command with a quote from Leviticus chapter 11, since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. So as Christians, we demonstrate that we're set apart for God's special purpose by living lives that reflect Christ's love for us. So as long as you turn away from your sins and you trust in Jesus and what he's done on the cross, you've been baptized or confirmed, you are a saint, a holy one. God has set you apart for his special purposes in this world, and has sent the Holy Spirit to dwell inside of you. And the Holy Spirit is at work in all of us, trying to transform our lives to help us to become the person God is calling us to be. This second angle, this experience, this is what the church typically focuses on when it talks about the saints. We tend to think of people who have led exemplary lives, literally living examples of what it means to live up to Peter's call to be holy in all of our conduct. And if you read through Lesser Feasts and Facts, or the newer book, Holy Men, Holy Women, produced by the Episcopal Church, you'll learn all about folks who have led exemplary lives. Lives of service to God through Christ-like devotion and sacrifice. And I cannot emphasize enough how important it is for our spiritual development to learn about these saints and to find one or two that you personally identify with who can help you by being guides and examples for your own journey. For me, there's a few people. Mr. Rogers, obviously, is the first one. Uh, St. Francis, uh, Henry Lewin, St. Benedict, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Those are just sort of my top five right now. That's not an exhaustive list by any means. But one thing that's important to remember about all these saints, all of these exemplars, is that none of them made it there on their own. We have to remember that first angle of looking at it, that we are all made holy before God. It's not something that we can do. So when we look deeply at the lives of our holy men and holy women, we see that while every one of them has done great things in service to God, that they have also done not so great things. All the people we revere as examples of holy living have sinned, and sometimes horribly. As Christians, we believe that our scriptures 
are a living word. And that God speaks to us directly through that word. And that the word and the Holy Spirit together are working to change us, to transform our understanding of who we are and how we relate <coughs> to one another and to God. And once we can see the Imago Dei in one another, it changes how we respond and react to one another. And this isn't anything that we are doing. This is us being made holy before God. And just like the saints that we revere, we are also all sinners. We all make mistakes. We all sometimes choose the wrong path. We choose to walk away from God in our words and in our actions. We walk away from the holiness that we have sworn to, that Christ is calling us to, and we reject sometimes Peter's admonition to be holy in all that you do. So we are all saints, and we are all sinners. And all the saints are sinners too. And it's important to remember that our sins don't just affect us. Our sins affect others. We cause suffering in other people's lives as well as our own. And if we really look at this dichotomy of what it means to be both sinner and sanctified, we begin to understand what it means to be set apart by God as holy, what it means that we are all saints. And this is why Paul calls us all saints in his letters to the churches. It's an acknowledgement and a reminder. Yes, we are all sinners, but yes, we are all sanctified. We are all made holy through Christ, and God calls us all to be sons and daughters in his holy family. But of course, the other thing that we're called to remember on All Saints Day is that we are honoring all of those saints who have gone before, all of those who have touched our lives and who have died, as we will die. We are called to remember that death is a part of life and not something to be feared or ignored. And we don't like to talk about death. And I think it's because human beings fear the unknown more than anything else. And death is one of the greatest unknown. We cannot know it until we go through it. And I do mean through it. Death is a doorway that is one person tall and one person wide. And the only other person that can go through it with us is God. And we know what's on the other side of that door, don't we? We know it's salvation. We know it's heaven. It's sitting around Christ's throne in glory and singing the glory of God's name. We're not afraid of that. That, that part's wonderful. It's the going through the door part that we're afraid of. But on All Saints Day, we celebrate those folks who have died after they've lived their lives of faith and we're now assured that they are with our Savior in paradise. We remember that yes, they were alive and they led lives of purpose that we should seek to emulate, and then they died. Their physical lives ended, but we believe, we know that they are alive in spirit in heaven. If you grew up in the Roman Catholic Church like I did, you were taught that the saints are so alive in heaven that they can hear your prayers and carry them to God to make sure that they are answered. Because they were so close to God in life that in the afterlife they are also very close to God. We don't really get into all that finer points of dogma, of the hierarchy of heaven in the Episcopal Church. If you want to believe that, absolutely fine. If you don't, also absolutely fine. But what I want you to remember is that even though these folks died physically, we believe that they are spiritually alive right now with God. We say it every week when we say the Eucharistic prayer together. We say, therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. All of the saints are singing with us, joining their voices with ours, and how could they do that if they were not alive in Christ? So yes, we have some big shoes to fill, some examples to live up to, and this is the life we are called to live as members of the body of Christ. This gift of life that we share with one another here on earth, 
reminds us that people just like us were called to be holy in all their actions. And though they were sinners just like us, they chose to answer that call with all their heart, all their soul, all their mind, and all their strength. And we recognize that we will someday be called to be among them, to join the heavenly chorus, to blend our voices with theirs as we all sing the glory of God's name. And we recognize that until we are called to our heavenly home, we are called to lead that same sort of life that they led. We are called to be the saints today. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, either out loud or silently in our hearts. Heavenly Father, we know that all who join in this worship, whether in person or online, each receive Christ's presence, the forgiveness of sins, and all other meanings of Christ's passion and resurrection. Mercifully accept the fervent prayers of your people, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, may we embody your love, be renewed for your service, and be reflections of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may be delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
uh, go to the website and download the newsletter and read all of those. All right. Do we have any birthdays, anniversaries, travelers, or surgeries coming up this week? If so, please come up for a blessing. servants Chris and Kent as they begin another year. Grant them that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And now we're going to say a blessing on these lovely uh, scarves and hats that were knitted. And again, this community thinks of y'all can extend your hands. Heavenly Father, we know that these were knit with love and prayer. And we pray that those to whom they are given may know in their hearts that you are with them, that they should feel the love that went into the crafting of these and know that there are those who care about them. We pray these things in your son's name. Amen. Amen. O oh Lord our God, you are worthy to receive glory and honor and power because you have created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Please join us in singing our offertory hymn, hymn 286. We will be singing verses 1, 2, and 5. Hymn 286.
give thanks to our Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For in the multitude of your saints you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses, that we might rejoice in their fellowship, and run with endurance the race that is set before us, and together with them receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Hallelujah. 
Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah.
almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Savior Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy ministries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace, united in joy and simplicity of heart, through prayer and the breaking of bread, in darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, trusting in God's purpose, love, and power. And the blessing of God our Creator, Jesus our Savior, and the Holy Spirit our constant companion, be upon you now and stay with you always. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.